the health and safety of the residents and the cleanup of the Trangooch gasoline spill site in Hazleton and Hazel Township, Pennsylvania is a priority to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, or US EPA. The problem started when an estimated 50,000 gallons of gasoline leaked from underground storage tanks at the former Trangooch tire site and other gasoline stations. The current site includes approximately 400 homes, bounded by Black Creek to the north, Hay Street to the east, Church Street to the west, Fisher Avenue to the northwest, and 17th Street to the south. The site also includes the 300, 400, and 500 blocks on both sides of 17th Street and the blocks on both sides of Arthur and Evans Streets immediately intersecting 17th Street. The Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, or PADEP, initially responded in 1993 when residents complained of gasoline vapors in their home. It was determined then that the vapors were associated with gas leaking into sanitary sewer lines in the area. The biggest concern to the residents is the gasoline component benzene, a cancer-causing agent or carcinogen. The Pennsylvania Department of Health, or PADOH, has offered free blood testing at the local hospital to screen residents for benzene. If you need to schedule a blood test, call 570-455-9007 for more information. The PADOH has also provided residents private health consultations. The concern about gasoline vapors in the homes are the con major constituents BTEX or benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylene. Our target compound we're using for most of our monitoring is benzene. The benzene levels that we're monitoring for range in homes from a low of 8.3, which is our detection limit, to uh, above 100 micrograms per cubic meter. Our efforts are to try to mitigate those levels down to that 8.3 level in homes. 8.3 micrograms per cubic meter is the action level developed in consultation with federal and state health officials. During the site investigation, the PADEP found that the gasoline was migrating to a sewer trench cut into bedrock along 22nd Street. The trench acted as a conduit for the fuel, which leaked into deteriorated sewer pipes, which in turn carried gasoline vapors into people's homes. Uh, the groundwater is relatively shallow in the area. We do have down 22nd Street a major utility corridor. Uh, once again, because of the lack of uh, soil, uh, bedrock had to be ripped in order to put the utilities into, in the area. Uh, in some cases, the bedrock may be, as, uh, may be ripped as much as 20 feet, and uh, this is acting as an interception trench. So obviously, contaminated groundwater is entering into the trench, uh, and because leaky joints in the old terracotta pipe, contaminated groundwater is entering into the sewers. Many of the homes in the spill zone were built prior to when construction codes required sewer vent traps. PADEP reacted by installing sewer vent traps in a number of homes, along with removing the leaking tanks on the Trangooch property. An underflow dam was also built on the Black Creek to help reduce the flow of gasoline in the waterway. Finally, in 1996, DEP requested assistance from U.S. EPA to further investigate the spill and help remedy the problem. A groundwater model was developed with the help of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to help track the movement of the subsurface spill as well as what effects an existing underground mine pool was having on the movement of the gas. The Army Corps of Engineers also installed a soil vapor extraction system known as SVE at the source of the spill.
SVE applies a vacuum to a system of underground wells, pulling air through the soil, thereby drawing the gasoline vapors to the surface where they can be removed safely. Further site characterization and investigation by EPA has prompted a response and cleanup plan that involves air sampling, the installation of sewer vent traps on all homes in the site area, follow-up sampling, and where necessary, the installation of temporary indoor carbon air filtration systems and the installation of soil vapor recovery systems in homes. The plan also calls for upgrades to the SVE system already installed on the Trangooch facility, along with the replacement of the sanitary sewer line along and to the north of a portion of 22nd Street. Additional soil vapor extraction and biosparging, a technology similar to SVE that promotes the evaporation of gasoline vapors below the water table, will also be installed to further accelerate the time needed to reduce the plume of gasoline. In an effort to develop better communication with residents, US EPA has set up a community information trailer on the Trangooch property where residents can speak directly to EPA and state officials with their concerns. This is really a clearinghouse for residents here in the area. They can come with any concerns that they have about their testing, about uh, whether or not they're being tested, what results, what, what's happening on a daily basis here at the center. We have uh, a daily sheet that we put out that lists the activities that took place during the day, how many vent traps were installed and so forth. The Community Information Center also distributes a weekly fact sheet to approximately 450 people in the area. Additionally, press releases are forwarded to three major local and regional newspapers. The newspapers use the press releases to get pertinent information to the public. EPA and the state are currently using a, a variety of sampling techniques to collect data on each residence. The residents see us uh, coming in with uh, bag samplers, which collect a 20-minute uh, sample that is uh, sent out to a mobile laboratory and analyzed at that time. Uh, we also do a follow-up sampling with a SUMA canister. Uh, it's a canister under a vacuum that basically draws in an air sample over an extended period of time. Those two sampling techniques are used in conjunction with each other to help us make that risk determination. The third method of sampling is using our trace atmospheric gas analyzer bus, which we refer to as the TAGA bus. The TAGA bus uses a long tube which draws an air sample from the house into the bus where it is analyzed in real time. We can thereby go from room to room, record the data in each room, and also identify specific target areas where we think vapors may be emanating from. The best benefit of the bus is that we are able to then take the data right to the homeowner and show them on the spot what is happening in each room of the house and how the vapors in one room are related to vapors in the other part of the house. EPA contractors are installing sewer traps in all of the homes in the affected area. On average, it usually only takes a day to install the unit, which is integral in combating gasoline vapors containing benzene from entering a home. Here's how it works. Gasoline vapors that may be in the main sewer line reach the discharge from your home. Without a vent trap, vapors have an unobstructed pathway to enter homes and vent through floor drains and other passages. The vent trap system stops vapors by utilizing a U-shaped piece of pipe where liquid creates a barrier, effectively preventing vapors from entering the home. In front of the trap, a vent stack is installed that acts as a chimney, drawing the vapors into the atmosphere where they're dispersed at low concentrations. Behind the trap is another piece of pipe rising to the surface that's used as a clean-out in the event that sediments accumulate in the trap. After sewer vent traps have been installed, additional air sampling will be performed. 
If benzene concentrations continue to read above 8.3, benzene could be entering the home through pathways other than the sewer lines. In these cases, another round of sampling is conducted to ensure that the benzene vapors are not coming from another source in the home, such as a gas can or lawnmower. So the follow-up sampling that we'll be doing with the Taga bus and the follow-up sumic sampling will be used to determine whether or not those levels are uh, still high and require further actions to prevent vapors from getting into the house. If the benzene concentrations remain above 8.3, additional measures may need to be taken. First, temporary air purifying units will be installed in the basement or the first floor if the home has no basement. The purpose of having it installed there is if the concern is for benzenes entering the house from the soils, that would be where we could best intercept the benzene levels. Uh, because we're trying to treat uh, these levels down to such a low concentration, the size of the unit had to be sized fairly large. The size kind of resulted in a very loud and very large air purifying unit. Having a larger unit that can assure treatment and by placing it in the ground floor, we could effectively treat the whole house by intercepting the benzene before it got into the rest of the house. The units are temporary, and EPA is currently looking at ways to reduce the noise levels of the units. The cost to operate the air filtration unit will not be borne by the resident. Payment will be made directly to the electric company by the EPA. Once we complete that and we feel we've documented the fact that there is an uh, external source of benzene that is getting into the house, we will be designing and uh, installing a soil vapor recovery system, very similar to what people refer to as a radon system. Basically, it is the installation of some piping and vents into and underneath the home that will basically extract the vapors from around and under the home and vent them in you know, a similar fashion to, the, to a vent stack outside the home. The blowers in those systems are very quiet and low powered. You know, we don't have to draw a lot of air, it just is a continuous flow so that the cost of operating those systems is not significant. EPA's response and cleanup plan also calls for the replacement of storm and sewer lines along a portion of 22nd Street and the repair or replacement on certain streets north and south of 22nd on an as-needed basis. Concurrent with the replacement of the sewer line, EPA also plans on installing an additional soil vapor recovery groundwater treatment system along 22nd Street. EPA is also continuing operation of the underflow dam on Black Creek. With the completion of these combined measures, US EPA is confident that residents in the affected neighborhoods will see positive results and the concentrations of toxic substances will be reduced and eliminated. <laughs>